In our last video, we have discussed sets and functions part 1. So, if you have not watched, you can see that. So, today's video, we are going to see functions. You know what is function? Relation and function both are different. So, every function is a relation. But every relation is not a function. Suppose a relation, if you want to say it is a function, it has to satisfy two conditions. The first condition, every element must have an image and every element must have only one image, right? So every relation need not be a function, but every function is a relation. Every function is a relation, but the converse is not true. But the converse is not true. There is a test, vertical line test. What is the use of vertical line test? You can check whether the given graph represent a function or not. So vertical line test is used to check whether the curve represent a function or not. See how to check that one. You can draw vertical lines. You draw vertical line. In two cases we can say it is not a function. In which two cases? The first one, suppose the vertical line cuts the curve at more than one place. Suppose, suppose if you have a curve like this, you draw a vertical line, it cuts at more than one place. Then we say it is not a function. And in another case, suppose when you draw a vertical line, it does not meet the curve. Then here also we say it is not a function. So vertical line test is used to check whether the curve represents a function or not. Two cases we say it is not a function. In one case, if the vertical line cuts the curve at more than one place, it is not a function and it is not at all cutting, not meeting the curve, then again we say it is not a function. So vertical line test is used. And the next is one-to-one -one function. You know what is one-to-one -one function? The another name is injective function. One-to-one -one function or we call it as injective function. So, in the lower classes you studied by using arrow diagram, right? When you draw arrow diagram, one-to-one -one function, every element related to one element, that is called one-to-one -one function, right? But now, how we are proving it? Suppose f of x equal to f of y, f of x is equal to f of y, then x is equal to y. That means different elements have different images. Or if x is not equal to y, then f of x is not equal to f of y. Then we say the function is one to one. Remember the another name of one to one function is injective function. And the next one is onto function. In the lower classes how we prove using arrow diagram you know, right? In an arrow diagram, every element of the codomain, suppose two elements are in the codomain. Every element of the codomain have a pre-image no element left out, then we say it is onto function. Every element of B has a pre-image, then we say it is onto. So, in onto function, the range of F is B. The range of F is B, or you can say the codomain and range both are same in the case of onto function. And another name of onto function is subjective function. So, you know, and the next one is bijection or bijective function. Bi means two. So, bijective function means if it satisfies both, it is both one one and on two, we say it is bijective function or we say it is bijection. Suppose f is a function from x to y. f is a function from x to y and g is a function from y to x. It is a bijection uh, if f and g are inverses to each other f and g are inverses to each other how can you prove they are inverses you know in matrix we prove how can you prove two matrices are, are inverses a into b equal to i b into a also i then we say a and b are inverses same way here two functions f and g f and g are inverses if you find f composition g is i g composition f is also i then we say they are inverses to each other if they are inverses to each other, then you can say it is a bijection or you can say they are invertible. And the next test, very important one, it is called horizontal line test. Earlier we have seen vertical line test, it is used to check whether the curve represents a function or not. And what is the use of horizontal line test? You draw horizontal lines. Using that, you can check whether the given function is 1, 1 or on 2 or not. That is the use of horizontal line test. 
a function is given. So you cannot say it is not a function. A function is given, you have to check whether, it is, whether the function is one to one or on to or not. Three cases you have to remember here. You draw a horizontal line. If the line does not meet the curve, if the horizontal line does not meet the curve, then we say it is not on to. And the second case, if the curve cut at more than one place, if the curve cut at more than one place, you are drawing a horizontal line, it cuts at more than one place. What's the meaning of that? This element has the same image, this element has the same image, this also has the same image. So two, three elements have the same image. That means it is not one, one. It is not one, two, one. That is the second case. In the first case, if the curve not meeting the, if the line, horizontal line not meeting the curve, it is not on to. If it cuts more than one point, then we say it is not one to one. And the last one, if it cuts at only one point, then we say it is one to one. So the use of horizontal line test. Using this, you can check whether the given function is one to one or on to or not. And you know what is identity function? Identity function means every element is related to itself. X is related to X. One is related to one. Every element is related to itself. That is called identity function. Constant function, every element related to a constant. That is called constant function. Modulus function or absolute value function, modulus X equal to X when x is positive and modulus x equal to minus x if x is negative. So modulus x has two values. For example, modulus x equal to 7. Then two cases you can say x is equal to 7 or x is equal to minus 7. We write the positive value. We write the value as it is, modulus x. We write x itself if the function is positive. And we say minus x if the function is negative. And some of the properties you have to study here. Suppose modulus u is equal to v, modulus u equal to v, then two cases you can say u is equal to v or u is equal to minus v. If modulus u equal to v, then two values for u, either u is equal to v or u is equal to minus v. And the next two very important, if modulus x is less than r, modulus x is less than r means x lies inside minus r and plus r, x lies inside minus r and plus r, minus r plus r inside minus r and plus r. That means x is greater than minus r and x is less than r. x lies between minus r and plus r. You must know how to denote it using inequality. Okay. And the last one, when modulus x is greater than r, when modulus x is less than r, we say lies inside. When modulus x is greater than r, we say x lies outside minus r and plus r. Outside minus r and plus r. Outside minus r and plus r means, you know, this portion. That means x is less than minus r and x is greater than r. Okay, so these are the two cases. Then we have signum function. Just a definition you remember. f of x is equal to x by modulus x. f of x is equal to x by modulus x when x is not equal to 0 and it is equal to 0 when x is equal to 0. And remember, the range for signum function is 0, 1, and minus 1. That is signum function. And the next one is very important thing, step function. Here we have two types of functions. We have greater integer function and smaller integer function or least integer function. Greater integer function or another name is floor function. Greater integer function or we call it as floor function. Two things you have to remember, how to denote and how to find. So, greater integer function, this is a symbol. This is a symbol for greater integer function, like L we are writing, right? So, greater integer function, read it as greater integer function of x. Some hint I have given, you take the left side integer, you take the left side integer. For example, you want to find the greater integer function of 1, 2 by 3. You know, this is 0, 1, 2. 1, 2 by 3 is more than 1, right? 1, 2 by 3 is somewhere here. You take the left side integer. The left side integer is 1. So your answer is 1. 3.26, 3, 4. 3.26 is somewhere here. So you take the left side integer. So the answer is 3. Greatest integer function of 7 is 7 itself. 
minus 2.3 listen so this is minus 1 minus 2 minus minus 2.3 somewhere here the left side integer is what minus 3 so you can remember very easily the symbol itself look, looks like l take the left side number so you remember so you won't make any mistake so how can you find the greater integer function you plot the point in the number line take the left side integer and that is greater integer function and the next one is smaller integer function or we call it a seal function smallest integer function or we call it a seal function how to denote this is the symbol and in least integer function or the greater integer function we have taken the left side element so here you take the right side integer plot the point in the number line take the right side number for example 1 2 by 3 1 2 1 2 by 3 means it is somewhere here take the right side number the answer is 2 same way you can see all these examples you can do it very easily and the last one you see even function and odd function it's a very simple thing to check whether the function is odd or even you have to find f of minus x we want to check whether the function f of x is odd or even you find f of minus x consider the function f x you find f of minus x if f of minus x is f of x itself we say the function is even and f of minus x is minus f x then we say the function is odd so in trigonometry normally sine and cos if you know sine and cos you can answer all other things you know sine minus theta is sine theta sine minus theta is sine theta minus sine theta and cos minus theta is cos theta so cos theta is an even function sine theta is odd function okay using that you can do all other trigonometry functions very easily so subscribe our channel to view the upcoming videos thank you